Hello and welcome to the English Matura Express, the Express to your success. My name is Maria and today we have two demonstration exams for you about the topic environment and pollution. Hello and welcome back. So now let's start with our first exam which is about surprise, environment and pollution. Um, our first topic is going to be the global warming. So let's zoom in. Here we are. Um, so first of all there is the introduction as usual. Um, so you have to introduce yourself. So keep in mind to use the correct tenses. So the past tense when you talk about your past and the future tenses about when you talk about your plans and hopes for the future. Good. Then we have task one, um, which is about global warming. Um, who are you? So what's your role? You are an environmentally scientist and you talk in a radio show. So maybe you could find a catchy intro or you don't. And yeah, you talk about the global warming and the impacts of the global warming. So let's see what the points are about. So you talk about what causes global warming the effects of global warming and the measures to tackle the problem. So the measures to reduce global warming. So that's part one of the exam, a quick monologue. Then part two is about the carbon footprint. So we are still in the environment um, topic. Um, and yeah, you have to talk about the carbon footprint. And there is a text. Um, it's how to reduce your carbon footprint and yeah, that's it with part number two. So read the text for that um, and then try to answer the questions from the examiner. But it's not only like asking questions, you should also be kind of active because it's a dialogue. And yeah, try to be active. Try also to ask questions. You can do that. Of course, you can disagree with the examiner. Agree. It's a normal discussion. Of course it's not because it's an exam but you know what I mean. And then there is the follow-up discussion. Um, there you can also ask some questions um, or you can be asked some questions by the examination board. Yeah, So they might ask you some questions or they are just quiet then you can ask some questions. So think about some questions about environment and pollution in general. Yeah. So that's it. So I'd say let's start. Chris, are you ready? Yes. It's great. Ah, here we are. We are both in the picture, I guess. Yes. So, hi, um, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Jeff and I started to work as a mechanic in the past. Okay, did you like your job? Mm, yes, I liked it very much, but I needed some change. Okay. And therefore, I decided to become a teacher. Oh, what, what subjects are you interested uh, in? English and geography. That's interesting, yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's why you want to take the A-levels today. Yes, exactly, because I want to start to study mm -hmm. at the University of Innsbruck, actually. Okay, and what about your hobbies? What do you like to do in your free time? Um, <laughs> um <laughs> is it my face? <laughs> no, never mind. Uh, I like to play drums a lot. Mm. Yes. So you're a little drummer boy. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. It's Christmas. Christmas time, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's great. Um. Good. So let's start with part number one, which is about the global warming. So you may deliver your speech whenever you're ready. Yes. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a really serious topic. It's about the impacts of global warming. Um, I'm going to um, talk about three aspects today. As I'm going to start off with the impact, uh, the causes of global warming, mm -hmm. then the effects of global warming, and last but not least. The measures to reduce global warming. Okay, so what causes global warming? Um, there are two factors that need to be considered. There is a natural warming of the earth that's mm -hmm. going on, so that's something that 
developed. So, which can't be um, steered or influenced. And there is the uh, global warming that is caused by mankind. Mm -hmm. And actually, global warming, of course, the, the one that is caused by mankind, for example, is when we use a lot of fossil fuels and of course burn them by using cars with motors um, the gases that are produced um, cause the global warming you could say so the gases actually create a layer that um, prohibits um, the sun rays to go into uh, space so, actually, so it's like a layer and it gets hotter and hotter mm -hmm. because it gets more dense this mm -hmm. layer so gases we have co2 um, gases we have nitro monoxide the uh, gases and so on and of course not only if we use cars we also have industry we have coal plants or coal um, uh, factories that use coal as a means to produce electricity. So that's the thing, uh, a big uh, impact actually. And of course planes, um, ships, um, so the big ones. Um, the effects of global warming kind of already outlined or touched upon that so we have um of course the most obvi obvious the warming itself um if we talk about the warming and a uh, logical conclusion is that if something gets warmer some parts of the earth melt and where can things melt exactly where there's ice it is happening with glaciers, it's happening in Alaska, the South and North Pole. Um, it melts or permafrost in uh, the taiga isn't permafrost anymore and it causes floodings, it causes humans or it, it causes people to move somewhere else or worse, causes um, catastrophes where a lot of people die um, yeah and of course for people itself um, if you think about Spain or something if it gets hotter and we use air condition the air condition has to cool more and so we use up more electricity and it's like always a chain mm -hmm. with problems attached to. Um, measures to reduce global warming is basically the only thing we can do is to think about alternative energies, uh, reduce um, our emissions especially created by fossil fuels, by the use of fossil fuels, by the burning of fossil fuels. So think about electricity using solar cells, um, using uh, wind power um, reducing um, your consumption of goods that are ordered online maybe by local um, and think about how you travel yeah. maybe consider using train or bus train is better of course uh, or your bicycle if you're in, in living in a city and it's possible to get there wherever you want to. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. So now let's move on to task number two, which is about the carbon oh yeah, carbon footprint. Um, so you talked about it even in your monologue about going by bike, for example. Mm -hmm. So how can we reduce our carbon footprint? So that was maybe one example, but what else could we do? Um, so we can, of course, um, 
use uh, public transportation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> um, public transportation a lot, of course. Mm -hmm. Bicycle, bicycle thing I've already mentioned. Planes are pretty bad for a carbon footprint. Yeah. Because they still emit a lot of. That's right. Of uh, gases and, and stuff. Do you mean like for a long distance? Do you think there is a better alternative? Mm, so far, there are. If you want to get there faster, not that yeah, many. Probably, yeah, probably. Yeah. Unfortunately. But maybe for short, short distances, go by yeah. train. So, yeah. So, uh, flight from Munich to LA is, of course. It is possible yeah. <laughs> with car and ship, maybe, but... Yeah, takes a lot of time, yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do? Do you do something to, to reduce your carbon footprint? Okay. It's a very tired Wednesday. So. Yes. I try to yeah. use the bus or the bike. But unfortunately, I'm forced to uh, to use the car a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to, but on some occasions, it's not possible to. So not when is use it not it. possible? What What do you mean? So where do you go by car? Uh, I go by car where I want to practice or basically record my drums. Okay. So um, this place is one hour away from okay. here and the train takes two and a half hours okay, and if I have to work sense. on the next day it's not possible anymore after work. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry um, so what about Austria do you think that they are aware of this um, of environmental problems and do they try to reduce people's carbon footprint I mean, mm. you talk about that you have to take the, you have to take the car because otherwise you would travel for two and a half hours do you think it would help if there was like a better um, transportation system? Yes, yeah. especially at the, um, to this place I, I, I travel. Mm -hmm. um, there is only one train connection and it lasts two and a half long, hours. Yeah. Yeah. And there is still no good alternative. There is a bus, but it's, yeah, it is a very uh, busy street there. Mm -hmm. So going on the street with something again doesn't really make sense so you would have it would have uh, it would be not would have uh, it would be uh, the best solution would be to kind of create a new train track so is there a train track you, yeah if you, not directly not really, not okay directly. not really so okay. you have to travel through germany so <laughs> <It's not hard. laughs> no. and then you have to go back to okay. Austria. And of course the east west train connection in Austria is awesome. Mm -hmm. And politicians, uh, so the green politics, they're trying to make people aware, make um, create laws that Protect, I yeah, think, protect right. or, or create benefits for, for the population so that they are more prone to use public transportation. Um, yeah, I don't think electric cars. Yeah. Do you think electric cars are a future? Sorry, no, 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 no. Um, Were they propagated to be the future, but I don't think so. Okay, why because not? Because we um, only think about the um, emission that is created by the car but not a lot of people nowadays think that um, a lot of people forget that there is has already been a lot of emission to produce the car that's right so it's basically i think the calculation is like you have to drive hundred thousand kilometers mm -hmm. with a diesel driven car so the equal of a produced electric car is 100,000 kilometers with okay. a diesel driven car. So you have already 
bought a car that has produced a lot of emissions. Just by being produced? Yes. Okay, I see Especially what you mean. Especially with the batteries. And mm -hmm. batteries are uh, quite a big problem. Uh, okay. So do you think there is a solution? Um, I mean, yes, that's a big question, but so what should the, the government do? Um, there is a, another solution, which is um, hydro... Hydropower? No. Hydrothermal? It's a gas. Oh. What's it called? I can't remember. That's the most cleanest solution, actually. You can create. But it's still... Um, I don't know. I think it's it has a lot of to do with politics and has a lot to do with the big companies, the German big, big German manufacturers, because they don't like it. They want okay, to okay. stick to the stick to the electric thing. Is because now it is propagated that everyone should have an electric car. Okay. That's the new future. That's quite interesting. Mm. Thank you for that insight. Good. So that's about it. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I just have to... Yes, this one. Oh, yeah. I am. Here I am again. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think you did a really good job. If you think so, too, um, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, no. um, but maybe tell us in the comments. And, yeah, he talked about what causes global warming. And what I found qu quite interesting, he not only talked about the man-made global warming, but all, also about global warming in general. And then he also talked about the effects, about that it's like a chain, like a vicious circle, like the office guys. Yeah, it all, it all goes together. And then he also talked about measures to reduce global warming, uh, which leads us to the dialogue where we also talked about the carbon footprint. Um, I had some questions. Yeah, he um, was able to um, tell us about his situation. That's always great because if you, you ask like, OK, what do you do? So also think about what's your opinion, what do you do? Um, yeah, that helps a lot. And I think we had a really nice discussion also about um, electric cars. And that's great because um, maybe do some research and then you can be the expert and you can impress the examination board. Yeah, I think the, um, it's in generally, uh, in general, um, environment and pollution is a really nice topic because you can study it yeah you can study it you can get some figures you can get some facts and i know it's about the language but i think it it makes you more confident if you have like great ideas and great facts and arguments to to talk about and i think that's it that's a nice topic to do that um so it's all about okay what's there what are alternative energies that's something you can learn and yeah good so that's about it with the first exam the second one um no, we won't save that. The second one is also about the environment and pollution. Here we have it on PDF. I, uh, I saved the wrong one, but here it is. So now let's have a look at that. That looks great. So again, we have the introduction. We are um, probably going to skip that. Oh, yeah, in the first one, he did a really good job. So he, he was a mechanic. His name was Jeff. And of course, um, you can also practice that at home. So like, what did I do before? What are my plans? What are my hobbies? But keep in mind that the examiner um, is going to ask you some questions in between. So don't just bubble, bubble, bubble. Also listen to questions like, okay, so did you like your job? Things like that. And yeah, then we have task one, which is he rebelled alternative um, forms of energy. So you are a volunteer for a well-known environmental protection organization and you are taking part in a project yeah and there is a meeting in vienna so you talk about the different forms of alternative energy the pros and cons of alternative energy and the energy situation in Tyrol. so that's also quite interesting yeah so what alternative and or what what kinds of energy are used and so on and so forth and um, we will see that in a minute and then there is task two, um, should be about waste management. But as I've said, I, I saved the wrong one. So this time it's about the green lifestyle, which is also quite interesting, I think. It's about an eco-friendly 
lifestyle. So we need a sustainability movement to make green living the norm. So that it's normal that everybody, um, the green normal is not something, uh, who does that? So maybe that's something we should all do. But yeah, you'll see in the text. Yeah, have a look at the text. It's again from The Guardian. I think they're great. Um, they have great articles, um, great words, great, great thoughts there. Yeah, um, good. So, Chris, are you ready for round two? Yes. Ah, good. So let's skip um, the the introduction. We know who yes. you are. And who am I? Jeff. Oh yeah. Oh, you also can be Chris. So. No, no. That's okay. good. I don't. <laughs> so let's start with alternative form, alternative forms of energy. You may deliver your speech whenever you're ready. Yes. Okay. So, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, today I'm gonna talk about alternative forms of energy. So, sorry. Sorry. I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you don't have to. Be sorry. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna elaborate on three in three aspects for this mm -hmm. presentation for this talk. Um. At first, I'm gonna mention a few different forms of alternative energy then uh, i'm gonna mention pros and cons of alternative energy forms mm -hmm. and the energy situation in general uh, so different forms of alternative energies um, are basically um, hydropower, we have wind power, we have um, solar power, we have biomass, yes. actually, we have, what else, what else do we have? I think that's it, hydro, solar, wind, wind, mm -hmm. you mentioned wind, wind? Yeah, yeah. Oh. okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and of course, with each form, and um, if we compare it to non alternative energy forms, we have pros and cons. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, um, start with the cons. Um, with alternative energy forms, come often come problems such as high costs, but um, it needs to be um, calculated over a bigger uh, time span than just the initial costs. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, especially speaking about private households, um, solar, for example. Um, yes, um, often high costs. I think wind power isn't that cheap. I'm just on my your microphone. Oh, my microphone. But I, yeah. But I think you it can be heard. Him. Yeah. Through your, okay. But no, it's made. Um, wind isn't that cheap either. But of course, we have the pros, which I'm going to mention as well. Uh, we have the pro now. I think it's more easier to list the pros than the cons. Mm -hmm. but, um, so we have. The obvious reason we don't use uh, fossil fuels. Uh, we have um, forms, or we not as so not as fossil fuels. When we use alternative energy, we have resources that re replenish. Kind of, so mm -hmm. we have the sun. If the sun isn't there anymore, we're dead. So, sun is always there. Often there, often there, always. Um, wind in windy uh, regions, of course. So, um, um, then we have biomass is a really good way. So it super cool. Um, and of course, a a big advantage is that you are independent from other. Um, producers, for example, uh, we have Russia that 
produces gas, we have also Norway and so on. And if we use alternative forms, for example, wind, we can be independent from such countries, if we want to, of course. Um, the same goes with fossil fuels, um, especially speaking about petrol and diesel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the energy situation in Tyrol is mainly um, I lost the word mainly dominated by hydropower. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of dams uh, where we produce uh, electricity, turbines, and so on. The classic way, uh, such as Kaunadal, we have such a thing, yeah. So mainly uh, hydropower, but of course Austria also has a little bit of uh, um, nuclear power that they're buying from Germany mainly. Germany, I'm sorry, my voice is... Okay, yes. Thank you. That's it. So thank you for your interesting monologue about um, alternative energies. Um, so now let's move on to task number two, which is about a green lifestyle. What is a green lifestyle? What does that mean? Can you explain that? Well, green refers to not being green as in color. Mm -hmm. uh, it refers to a living a eco-friendly lifestyle and also it, it also refers to um taking care of the environment being mm -hmm. aware of different alternative energy forms or what's uh, what we can do about um to save our planet or reduce a certain amount of gases and so on just co2 and yeah Okay. That's basically the green lifestyle we always refer to. Okay, sorry. Um, so, talking about green living, how can someone live greener? So how would you... So, when it's all about living, so it's, it's basically also about using alternative forms of energy, but just um, consider a, a typical household. How can you make your household greener? Uh, yeah, it, it might start by a not so obvious uh, thing, mm -hmm. it's uh, about the food you're consuming, actually. Okay, so what your do you diet. mean with that? Um, basically, um, if you consume a lot of meat, mm -hmm. or actually any um, products coming from animals, mm -hmm. mm, it normally involves a lot of transportation, a lot of... Um, and so a lot of emissions, but also the production and even the methane, methane gases that are emitted by a cows yeah. and so on. Um, okay, so by not eating that, we would be greener? Would be basically, yes. Okay. But of course, not everyone wants to kind of reduce that. A mm -hmm. uh, better solution would be to buy locally Okay, but why should we do that? Isn't it cheaper just to order yes. it online? Or of course, it so is cheaper, yes. And that's the problem because it then separates people into groups because not everyone can afford expensive meat. Okay. And But maybe if all would buy locally, then it would be... I mean, sorry, if all bought locally, then it would be cheaper. Yeah. Maybe. So, Maybe, yeah. yeah. Mm, we don't know that. But we don't know, unfortunately, because there is still cheap meat, of course, available. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have to mean that... Yeah, maybe it should be just a bit pricier. But yeah. Um, everyone has the right to decide which uh, diet he wants to do. Um, but basically, if we were to look for farmers that are local and maybe not super big producers but that's the same thing actually even if they're local 
they're still emitting or use have I don't know how many cows and they have to use machines and all the stuff it's basically the same although it hasn't to hasn't really high or they know they don't have that much transportation right now. Um, and of course, uh, if we think about the household, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a family, home. Um, flush the toilet only once a day. No, just yes, kidding. exactly. Yeah. No flushing toilet. <laughs> no, uh, no uh, especially think about the heating. Yeah. Think about the insulation of the house, which is should be the first thought before the heating. Um, and how... <laughs> how how this heating works, how mm -hmm. it's produced, so um, electricity, of course. Um, so would you consider yourself as a, a green living person? Do you pay attention to food or to your heating or is there anything mm. you do? Yes, I do, living? yeah. But unfortunately, I still live in a flat and concerning the heating, it's like pretty decided yeah uh, but I, I I try to eat not as much meat mm -hmm. as possible and buy it locally and yeah maybe also separation of waste would be something yes yes you do that yeah that's good maybe try to reduce plastic but it's it's hard yeah it's because really hard yeah many things are wrapped in plastic so maybe keep that in mind when you go shopping try not to buy things which are wrapped in plastic i think it's you can't really do that you it's can, hard you can yeah. maybe you also have to go to a different supermarket mm. for that i think there is one but not in Innsbruck. there are two in Innsbruck. there is one without yeah. plastic yes oh really yes. is it dense no no i think they're doing it too but not with every product okay. it is uh, there's no Luft and Lose and Lose, but that's not, I don't think, okay. not in, in Austria. I think, yeah, one is in the market hall and one is ah, okay. uh, uh, Maria Theresa's place. I think. I have no idea. So that's really something that you can have a look at. I think that's yeah. quite interesting. That's cool, actually. Yeah, they're trying hard to make it happen, but it's always a problem, I think, with, or sometimes, with. Mm. Uh, with the hygiene, um, yeah. um, I don't know, yeah. laws that we have. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So that's it. Ah, here we are. Um, so thank you again for this great um, exam. We talked about alternative forms of energy. That's again just something you have to learn and then also be aware of the pros and the cons of alternative energy. Um, there are some, so he talked about the costs, but there he also talked about, okay, it's more like the initial costs are high because then you don't really have to pay for the sun. I mean, once you have your solar panels on the roof, you probably won't have to pay for the sun to shine. So that's quite interesting, I think. And he also talked about our energy situation here. Um, green, eco-friendly lifestyle, he was able to identify that, uh, which you should be after you have read the text, of course. So maybe have a look at that, it's quite interesting. And yeah, we also talked about his living situation. Again, this could happen so that we ask you, okay, what's your opinion? How do you live? Um, I mean, you don't have to share too, too private information and we don't want to know all. But maybe that's just something... Um, you should be capable of yeah so also think about okay how do i um what do i think about that what's the situation what's my opinion on it and so on and so forth um yeah and that's about it with the second exam as i've already already mentioned environment and pollution i know it's it's for some people it's a hard topic because you have to learn it but for others it's it's an easy topic because you have to learn it or you can learn it yeah you know what i mean so if you're interested in this topic just um keep in mind to to study the the topics so like alternative energies global warming so these are just things you need to know and i think it's not really bad to know that because it's a quite um recent topic and i think we should all know about that because it's 
it's our planet and yeah we probably need to do something not probably we we should do something about that um yeah good so that's about it if you have any questions um please ask um leave us a comment we are happy to answer all of your questions if we can um if not we try our best of course then yeah that's about it um i say thank you and bye bye and see you next wednesday bye bye Alarmstarre.